Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming here to join us for this wonderful conversation. I'm so, so excited to be speaking with Esther Harrison of Cur It Art. And I am honored to have a recent interview that I'm gonna be linking down in the description of this video. Uh, but I'm just so thrilled to be speaking with you today. And I'd love if you wanted to share a little bit about yourself. So people that are might be excited to get to know you might know a little bit about you. Hello, Edgar. Hello, everyone. I'm super thrilled um, to be able to talk to you today, tonight, here in Berlin. I'm in Berlin. My name is Esther Harrison. I'm a writer, a witch, an activist, and I'm the publisher of Kray Art. Um, it's a trilingual online art magazine. And the main areas we focus on is spirituality, activism and tech in contemporary art. And um, I'm writing about art since a decade. I founded Kaya Art in 2018. And when I was finishing leaving another online art magazine where I was the editor in chief, because I really wanted to write about the artists, projects and topics I was really interested and cared about, especially outside of the normal, the art market structures I used to work in, or the usual gallery uh, lists and stuff like that. That's what I'm doing mostly, yeah. Yeah, and I'd love to hear, Esther, um, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about like how you got into art, because I think that that's really, um, you know, important, especially, you know, as we're, what brought us together, which is kind of, as you named, an appreciation of a different kind of art, right? Or art that maybe expands uh, yeah. Uh, the definition of what we consider art right now. Yes, yes. I mean, I was always writing since I was small and reading up a lot. Growing up, my parents are both, in a way, activists and very spiritual, and one would say maybe hippie-like. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> it was always, in a way, around me. But I was in, for a long time, in music industry and worked for a very big concert agency as a promoter like with artists like Amy Winehouse and stuff. So that was a really great time, but it was also very um, exhausting and I had a very severe burnout. It was also not a very unhealthy uh, lifestyle, I have to add. So it all came together. And after I went to rehab and I did a new education as a marketing communication expert, but uh, I had to do an internship also and uh, this company had a back then a block for Nokia I mean Nokia is of course by now not existed anymore right I started out writing there about concerts because I had mm. still all the connections and da, 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 and that was really really great and then a friend of mine told me about Art Berlin and that they were looking for writers and specifically back then it was a time that was in 2011. And at that time, there was a gallery boom in Berlin and art was everywhere. And she was looking for someone who could write about art, but who would not, mustn't come from the art background or like mm. someone who studied art. She wanted right. someone who could write about art so the people can, can understand and feel it and are not afraid of it. Because also back then there were a lot of people younger people who wanted to buy art and so that's how it started out and um, when I was thinking about or preparing myself a little bit for this conversation I remembered one show I visited back then it was David Adamo where I had the first because I didn't know very much about contemporary art it was really something I just jumped into and I remember that show was so magic in a way because it was very minimalistic and I came in and I was like, oh my God, how, how shall I write about that? But <laughs> it had amazing, I even went back to that old article and the floor was made of chalk. I remember when I was in the writing process because through the, the visitors would walk on the chalk and it would dissolve in the air. Mm. And it was a very alchemic, transformational moment. And I remember even now writing about this show, 
I really got into the zone. I tapped into this intuitive place where I could really grasp the different elements which made this show so special. Even it was very minimalistic and a lot of concept art, which was, of course, back then I had no clue about it. But it really, now I'm thinking of it, I, I think like, I got really also excited when I was writing about it because I realized how much power there is in putting together a show with different mediums or objects and materials and also that process of the writing to, to just sit down and let it flow. I think it was when I was the first time in Brazil in Rio, my cousin, my badass Scottish cousin used to live in a favela there and my brother and me would go there for months and stayed with her in the favela. It was a really a life changing experience and I would back then I came in contact with artists in the contemporary art scene in Rio and I had like an epiphany. I mean I remember I was sitting in the underground. I was coming back from a studio visit with an artist. His work is hanging in the <laughs> right behind there. you. <laughs> yeah. Daniel Arnes, he's to this day a close friend of mine. And I was reading a catalog about him. And it was all of a sudden I could feel and smell all the oil paint which was used in all centuries for art. It was like. Mm. To this day, I get goosebumps. It was amazing. I mean, and at that point, I decided, okay, this is what I want to do and nothing else. And that's how it started. And then a few years later, I got offered the editor-in-chief position there. Wow. And I jumped on it, of course, and did it for a few years. And then I left after, yeah, like three years then in that position. Wow. And started my own own magazine. Yeah. And I'm also a second burnout. So <laughs> <laughs> we go in phases, right? I think, you yes. know, our careers yes. have m yes. multiple waves. And, you oh, know, I, really. yeah, I so appreciate so much of what you just shared. I think, you know, it really resonates a lot. Um, as someone who also for a long time felt maybe alienated from the art market or from the art world and also is coming at it from another perspective. And I think that that's something yeah. that really joins us and that really yeah. excites uh, me about our connection and also about the interview that we just did um, that I'm gonna be linking. I think it's really exciting to one, like, you know, as you name, to have people from other vantage points, from other perspectives to look at artwork. And then, you know, you also brought up the oracular, right? The intuitive, the yeah. channeling that happens when we're in oh. contact with art, right? That we can yeah. tap into something transcendent that goes beyond time and space. And I'd love to hear more about, you know, I think, you know, one of the things that is really exciting about that interview we just did is, and also mm -hmm. just about the work that you're doing in general is mm -hmm. that you're really, um, you know, as you say, you're looking at the transformative power of art, right? And yeah. And the way that art, you know, can exist as more than just, um, you know, money or as yeah. a commodity, that there's something so much grander happening and that there's so many artists who are kind of stepping into these roles. So, yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Concerning the transformation power of art, it's something I realized, I think the last year was... I said it before we were chatting, like it was like a pressure cooker. It was like a magnifying glass. And I ha had a lot of very big projects planned or like going for funding and everything and all that broke down. And I also in the same time, then things happened like the murder of George Floyd and a lot of stuff happened in the same time. Right. I also joined a coven and it was also on a spiritual for my spiritual path, it was really like a, a different consciousness, a different understanding also. I mean, I was always concerned about these things, but I had to let go of a lot of big projects. I had put in so much work. And when I 
was sitting with myself, I thought, but what comes it down to? And what is something I can share or which is understandable for everyone, doesn't matter where, where in the world, it is to share how art can transform our reality mm. and our daily lives. And I also understood that it is really all the artists I spoke to and the ones who will be featured in that book, they all have elements of activism, spiritual practice in some form or kind and tech what they use, you know? Mm, and right. um, I often get this, many, many people are like, oh, you know, you're so passionate, but that's so naive. And I think that's very wrong. I don't want to be like, oh, I'm better or I'm preachy or something like that. I think it's very important to know everyone is on their own journey and having their own struggles. But I think we are living in a time where it's, it's, it's important and vital that we all try to transform our everyday and reality to the better in, in any, any level or consciousness and be it in a 3D or a fifth dimension, if you're already on that path, that's great. But if not, it's really time to wake up and to face what's going on. And I see a lot of people who are very scared. They get even more uh, crazy about consuming and escapism and everything. And I think art is a very, very powerful motor and, and tool and it's endless. And it can hit and transform or work on so many different levels if you're just open for it. I don't say, oh, it will help heal everything and uh, we just have to do art or read about art or do art, listen to art, watch it. No, but I think it can be a very powerful um, way of tapping into different kind of mindsets or also realizing toxic patterns or limiting mindsets we have. And um, I also really struggled a long time because I thought, who am I that I should write about that? But then I realized that's very, that's the, that's the trap right. that we think, oh, I can't contribute something. I think we, everyone has something to contribute. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. And I think it's our duty. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the word duty, but I think it's necessary that we all try to find what kind of resources do we have? How can I maybe tap into something different? How can I evolve? And how can I be a better person and help everyone around me? And in the end, I decided really to let the artists speak and I will focus on really their stories. And I have so many examples of where artists or photographers, it doesn't matter from which, um, uh, what tools they're using, how they actually made a difference. Mm. A measure, I want, you know, I want to have uh, uh, like examples where I say, I can put my finger on it. This is what happened. This was the outcome. And this is how it's spreading. And this is how they changed something actually with their art. And that's... Yeah. What, I, what I'm aiming for. And I think that that connects to, you know, witchcraft too, is that, yeah. you know, there's uh, there's a way, you know, as you named earlier that, yeah. you know, sometimes when people come in hoping that art can be transformative or hoping that, yeah. or even hoping that you can have an impact, you know, I know that yeah. as an artist that it's been challenging to feel like you can have an impact. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, it could even be a strategy that sometimes is used by colonization yeah. or patriarchy, right? To, keep people out of their power. And I think that's something that's so exciting about art and, and witchcraft is it's really, um, in a sense, it's like an invocation of power. It's an invocation of trust. And it's also, um, 
you know, it really allows us to connect with people in a different way. And I think that is something that is challenging to the system, right? And so there's so much invested in keeping people feeling powerless or keeping people feeling like um, their hopes or their dreams of their art doesn't matter. And I know that's something that I've heard growing up a lot. I've been called naive a lot. I've also been uh, told that my art is not going to make a difference. And so I can really resonate with that, you know, <laughs> like that, yes. that like those voices or, you know, the way yes. that this system tells you that, right? Yes. And this is also something I realized. I mean, I always was a very spiritual person. I mean, I have, a, I practiced Tibetan Buddhism for a long time. I knew about love energy can feel if you have a very powerful Lama, you know, or I, I saw things, you know, and right. when I was called or got the information that I'm a witch, it wasn't something where I was like, oh, it came, you know, it, and um, I was, of course, the first year you do a lot of research, da da da, you have to try to find your I had like a few key figures like Pam Grossman, Robin Rose Bennett, um, The Trap Witch, Juliet Diaz, to name a few. But in the second year, you start to know your shit, you get more comfortable. But last year, there was a transformation also with myself, how I perceive myself. I recently posted for the first time a video I recorded, you know, <laughs> which I would do never, you know, because I realized <laughs> also when I had the burnout in 2018, I put my, my Instagram on private, which was unheard of for me. I had a lot of followers. I threw out most of them and was private and that was necessary. But I also realized at the end of last year, and I got the, these downloads over and over again, because I'm big always about talking about leaving one's comfort zone. And I realized it was time for me to, to leave my comfort zone. So I changed my settings. I went public. I also said yes. And because I realized I was having these compartments like the mm. Esther Harrison with Curry Art, the private one, the private, private, which accounts, you know, right. and I realized it was time because it's my identity. That's who I am. And it had also to do with a spiritual authority to take myself and my spiritual authority serious as a woman, as a writer, as an activist, as a witch. And I have a lot of people who write to me or I know they secretly watch my stuff or <laughs> because they, or not secretly, but I know they're like, ah, oh, it's Esther. Okay, then I can, I can follow it. I can watch it through that. They get more, yeah, it, it was the same with Kari Art in the beginning. Everyone was like, what spirituality? Ugh. You know, it's like, <laughs> they don't want to so what are you so afraid of? You know, and um, now I realized my whole life I had to overcome so much stuff and addiction and I don't know what and burnouts and work and toxic patterns and, but it's like I had all, I was all over the place scattered and it's like I'm having now, it's like a knot. Mm. And everything is coming together. And I think especially in these times we're living I truly believe it's very important we're authentic. And because I always are also called an authentic writer or person. And I think honestly, I'm authentic. And I realized, I said, if you be authentic, you have to also now it's time to step up and, and, and show yourself your authentic self. Because of course the people are afraid. They are afraid to being ridiculed. Uh, I know a lot of people probably say, oh, she's crazy or whatever, but I don't care. That's not, I mean, if the people haven't realized that there's no going back to normal since, since last year and right. that we're, we're experiencing a big transformation and change in all areas. I think the more people are open and honest, if they have good intentions, the better. And that's why I also decided, okay, I'm, I'm coming out of the closet, so to speak, as a right. witch and share 
what I do. I don't know where it will lead me, but it doesn't matter. We know the powers in the unknown. <laughs> and I mean, that's part of it. That's the most exciting part to trust. And yeah, and I, you know, I really um, can resonate a lot with this kind of, as you're saying, that knot or this weaving yeah. together that's yeah. happening because it's so powerful how so many people are bringing together different parts of themselves and also how many disciplines are coming together. And I definitely know that, you know, you know, as an Indigenous person that like there's so many communities who do not separate art and magic, art and activism. Yeah. These are things that just live together, right? And yeah, yeah. and so, and I, I'd love to hear, you know, I guess one thing I'm wondering if anyone's watching this who might be like a witch in the closet or maybe yeah. they're like a baby witch, you know, you kind of talked about just coming out of the witch closet. Yeah, any, any words of advice or anything that you'd like to share to anyone who maybe is afraid or is practicing yeah. in secret, you know? I mean, I think it's really important to take your time because it's very, um, you know, you have all those TikTok witches, you have the witch aesthetic. It is, a, it's also trendy, let's face it, you know? And um, I think it can be very, you know, seductive to be like, oh yeah, I'm jumping out too fast to just do something because you're so, you see all those aesthetics and the beautiful girls and they're all like, so well put together. And I, I also remember there, it took quite some time to really find what, what I was vibing with, what I was about, because it has, it's in use, it's in you. Everything you need and you have to know is in, inside of yourself. And in my experience, meditation, it always sounds a bit boring, but it comes down also, for me, it's nature and really listen and be open. Go to that tree that calls you. You think he calls you, it, then he calls you or she, right. you know, the grandfather, grandmother tree. I was a solitary witch for quite some time. I could have never imagined to be in a coven. I think it's good to pick out one or two or three witches you feel, you feel drawn to and where you feel like, ah, yes, this is, something I, I vibe with and, and, and that makes me feel seen. And then really take your time because I think it's also important to read and research and get, get, get really aware of what it means and what does it mean to you because we, we are so pressured to always share everything and show ourselves. This is something very sacred and special and right. it's very powerful. And if you let it, because I'm also Taurus, I want everything now, I'm very impatient, you know, and I now had learned like taking it slow is a superpower mm. to trust, to trust and also speak to goddess i mean if you for me if my deity is artemis my main deity i work with and to really speak to speak to the deity uh speak to the trees um look around you and then you will see the signs because the more you engage with these different all different <laughs> layers and things the more open you get and the more you will see. I think trust is a very, very big part in it. And also to trust in yourself because that was also a part of my learning or becoming as a witch. It, it had to do with self-worth and with empowerment and with self-love and right. accepting my body or everything always works very well i think is mirror work journaling 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 write down everything and um there are a few very good books i'm very happy to share them maybe i can share a couple of the books that you recommend yeah. in the description yeah. of this video too that yeah. way if people want to get started in yeah. that way and then if coming out of the closet, I think when you are at that point, when you start thinking about it, then for me, 
I am also, also a cosmic witch. I'm very much, you know, the astro, the, the stars and the moon and the phases, all that is for me very important. I worked with that all my life. And so take these things in consideration, take them serious. And because I think if a person is thinking about coming out of the closet, then you know it's just a matter of time. But then be aware that you will have probably people reacting to it because before you do that, there's a lot of coming to terms with what is my priority? And then the priority is you want to share what's really important to you and the big aspect of, your, of who you are. Because if you are rich, you're rich. You know, it's not like, oh, <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> you know? no. yeah. it's, fu it's funny you say that because I can so relate to that also as an artist too, um, because I feel like I've had so many messages my whole life of people telling me like, you're not going to make money as an artist. You're not going to succeed as an artist. It's the hardest career. Um, but no matter what, even if I, you know, I'm also a therapist, right? So I've yeah. tried living other lives some, um, but no matter what, I've always had to create. And in the same way, um, yeah. I've, I've also always been uh, you know, a mystical person. I've always felt and thought in different ways. And as much as I wanted to conform and blend in, I'm always going to be a freak, no matter what, you know, <laughs> and at some point, um, you know, as you're speaking about self love and, mm -hmm. and compassion for the self, it's, it's important at some point to accept who you are, right. And to yeah. say, like, this is who I am. And yes, when I show up as a, my authentic self, some people are going to be so excited and, and are going to be so inspired by you. And it also might upset people. It also might confuse people. And I think that's also important to name. And so I think what you said earlier yeah. about taking your time and also understanding that this is a really personal thing and that yeah. it's okay sometimes to make barriers or boundaries and be like, I need some time away to process and to figure yeah. out what makes sense for me, right? I think those are all really important things that we really need to do before, you know, taking that next step, which is coming out and then finding community and realizing that there's so many other people like us out there too. Yeah. Yes. And that's also one thing. Um, I always did that in my work, doesn't matter which kind of work it was, but especially also in my writing and working with artists, but that's also what I did. Like I followed my intuition. I mean, I, that's how I connected with you. Um, I was listening to that podcast from Pam last year and I was immediately drawn into <laughs> and uh, in the beginning, I mean, I could have never imagined we would connect in this way. But if you feel called to reach out to a witch, a light worker, uh, whatever it is, just do you know, and um, I don't say pester the people and flood their <laughs> camps, but I think if it's supposed to happen, it will. And don't be right. afraid to show yourself or what I can also really recommend. I don't want to talk all the time about Pam, but she also is doing with Janaka Stucky. I'm not sure if his surname is, I'm saying it right. Um, they're doing those occult, occult writing workshops right. and don't have to be a writer to do them, of course. And they are just amazing. You can, you pay what you can do. There's like a certain sum you should, but it's like everyone can afford it. It's not expensive. And it's an amazing way to, because Pam is doing the most beautiful circle. I mean, <laughs> and they're both the combination of their their works especially the feminine and the masculine they're both so interesting and profound in their in their practice and this writing workshop is a fantastic way of tapping into it right. no one sees you your zoom is on on blank but you have all the other people who are in that in that community in that group for that time and there, there's also times where you share then what you write or where you have questions and all the people give tips or it's mm. like a mix of 
all people from everywhere and with which background or not. And um, so I can really, really recommend those um, occult writing workshops they're doing. For Do you example. know, are they still open to, to accepting new people? Because maybe we could also link those because I, you know, definitely feel like a lot of people could benefit from that kind of community. Yeah. Yes, um, they do them regularly. Great. Okay. They used to did them in person, I mean, live in, in New York. But of course, when Corona started, they um, moved them online and they, it, it actually works very, very well. And I had the most profound, I mean, I don't want to go in detail because that's private, but it, I'm very, very grateful for, for um, this writing workshop. They have one which is called The Occult Ocean. Oh my mm. God, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds incredible. Yes, it is incredible. And they do it on a regular basis. So just follow Janaka or, or Pam. And I mean, sign up quickly because, the, but they always have like, I think hundred people or so. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, you, you bring yeah. up the, the generosity of so many witches, right? I think that's something that, yeah. oh my goodness, has been so transformational for myself. You know, Pam is definitely someone that I am so blessed to be connected with. And mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, in reading her writing and also knowing that she has countless podcasts, right? There's such a deep well of information, of connection, yeah. and also as of drawing networks too. I think the witches are really powerful at making webs, right? And yeah. and supporting each other and, um, and also connecting us like the way that you and I connected too. And I love yeah. that what you said earlier about taking that risk sometime when you have that intuition and you're like, something is telling me to reach out. I'm I'm definitely that kind of witch also where you know if something says to you if you get that nagging feeling or yeah. you have the the guides yeah. coming in and telling you contact yes. that person then you need to talk with them yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah yes. and and you know trusting that and taking that risk I also would not have imagined that we'd be talking together and <laughs> it's amazing what can happen when we trust that intuition and connect That's with each true. other and I'm so honored to yeah, to work with you. And I'd love if you want to share a little bit about um, the work that we've done together and um, what people can find, you know, once they click on that link in the description, if they want to yeah. uh, read a little bit more. Yeah, it was actually like a premiere for me because we had always the very spiritual focus um, on Kray Art, but I never uh, interviewed a, a witch. And also, because I also, I, I'm being very honest now, I know that a lot of people will be, hmm, you know, there are many readers who are very open, but they're also, there's so much bias and weird conceptions. And um, so when I conducted the, the questions for you, for me, it was really important to show, first of all, yes, he, you're a curator, you're an educator, you know, you're doing at the moment your masters of fine arts, you know, and you're a witch. So the people see that, yeah, that what we were talking about is, is you're not just this one thing, but this, this, uh, this plethora of, 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 <laughs> <Right. laughs> and also these questions will be for people who are not in the witches community or in the spiritual community per se, most of them. So it was really important for me that the people get really an idea where you there they are coming from, you know, how what is your background and how do you implement your witchcraft in your work, in your art. And also you, I mean, with the last um, uh, show you did in Berkeley, you also went out of your comfort zone. You know, you're also not finished, a finished being or a finished um, witch. You're, you're constantly building and evolving. And I really wanted to show the whole array and, 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 and all the different all the different layers that that comes into your practice and i know a lot of people are you know they're like oh it's just a lot of colors and but i want to take the fear that's why i thought it was really perfect to 
start this loosely series with you because I think I'm sure of it, they can sense the positivity, the, 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 the essence that there's, you know, there's something very, very warm, but also very light and outrageous. And yes, <laughs> look at it, eat it up, you know, get used to it. Not everything is mm, 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 in these <laughs> thoughts, you know, what everyone's telling you. That's, excuse me, my French bullshit, you know, open your, open your head, open your mind open your heart and I think that was yeah that was the main goal I tried to achieve with that interview and I mean man was I right because your answers are just it got me really really excited and I had new ideas for the book and just couldn't talk before to Alina who will be also in the book she's in Beirut a photographer and also doing amazing work. And it made me really realize how important and profound these conversations are and have as many people as possible tap into it and just get acquainted with it. Or as you also say in the interview, I want to, I want to make the people feel safe with their emotions, but also I want them to be like, oh, oh, oh. you know, it, it, yeah, it, it should confuse you. Get confused. It's okay. You don't have to <laughs> figure everything out, you know? Right. See yeah. What <laughs> yeah. I love what you're saying because I think, you know, you've kind of brought up fear, right? And that there's yeah. fear um, or even apprehension or even like a dis yeah. dislike or a confusion that can come up yeah. with both art and witchcraft, right? That yeah. these are... Um, and I think that's something important to name is that these are powerful tools that are yeah. are really for anyone. And I think, you know, yeah. I, I think that's something important to also state is that, you know, whether or not you identify as an artist or as a yeah. witch, you know, that yeah. doesn't really matter. Really, yeah. these are yeah. tools for, as you say, transformation, for, for also self-reflection, for reconfiguration and reorganization like these are tools that anyone can use and you know whether or not you are a goddess worshiper or whether or not you believe in contemporary art there are ways that some of these really powerful tools and ways that artists are also integrating different disciplines i think is really transformational for anyone at yeah. all you know and also just and Absolutely. general for culture too. So yeah. um, I guess I, one thing I'd love for you, you know, since you know some of the, you know, people that read um, and that like follow you, I'd love for you if you wanted to say a little bit to them who maybe are on the fence or maybe um, are wondering, what does this have to do with art? You know, how does this connect to art? Like, I guess making the, making the case for witchcraft within art. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, of course, people like Georgiana um, Houghton or Hemaf Klin come to mind immediately. Or also, I mean, Kandinsky or God knows what, they all, all worked with that. Right. And I, um, it's just not, I mean, with the, the first female artists I named, it's a bit like, oh, there were women, you know, and everyone was into seances. But I think it is something which uh, is used since mankind started making images in caves. It was about expression. It was about a sense of the self, the sense of the self in, in the universe. It was the need to leave something or to, to transcend something, something they felt. And we shouldn't be fooled by what we consider uh, our very, <laughs> our fast forward society or the art market we know is everything but art. It's about money. <laughs> That's unfortunately the case and diminishes everything that is so powerful about art 
it 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 just it it's, it's not even mentioned or it is like oh that's an activist who works with art i mean it's like it's so typical that everything gets divided and mm. this is only worth something or this can you can only use it if you are this kind of person and i think art i i remember often when i would be in galleries or would talk to people who they would say like oh oh you mustn't ask me i don't know nothing about art and i said well great perfect then you're perfectly <laughs> you don't have to know anything about art to experience it and to feel what's coming through and it, it just don't put yourself i have this there's this very good book called the artist's way now i forgot oh i love that book yes yeah of course and she also said but this book is everyone is creative every person has creativity inside of them everyone right. it's just your limiting beliefs and i think it's the same with art art is art is powerful it is something that can change even chemically something inside of you because it can cause disbelief it can cause excitement it can cause you know you can start to cry it, it can affect you so out of the blue if you're just open and it has nothing to do if you know something about art if you what kind of education you have, where you're coming from, that's, it's for everyone. And I think this is something many, many people don't see or feel like because they see, oh, art is something for those people with money or people who are in a certain, you know, da, 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 oh, it's nothing for me. Everyone is so chic and so grand and they know so much and they talk like, mm, you know, and so I, th this is, this has no place for me. And this is why I really, really also love, and that's what I would tell all these people is why I love so much. Also what you are doing is you're creating and also all the other folk who work in this parallel right. <laughs> universe, art universe, which is very much a reality. Uh, it, it, it's, it's for everyone. There are no rules. You know, the rule is there are no rules. The rule is in your head and what the society tells you. And that's, that's the transformational power of art. And art <laughs> everyone, I mean, it's really, it's very easy if you think about it, but it's something you have to just let happen. And yeah, you know, I can really draw parallels to what you're saying to also, um, you know, having worked with people as a, both a therapist and as a witch um, yeah. uh, around intuition too. I think mm. so many yeah. of us grow up in this society um, being forced to disconnect from our intuition and yeah. from our bodies. And, you know, my, a lot of our intuition is in our bodies. And mm. I feel like it it's also something that can feel alienating to some people. Um, like I'm not psychic, I'm not a witch, I don't have an imagination. And, you know, having worked with countless people in supporting them and guiding them towards their bodies, towards their intuition, I've witnessed such powerful, magical things wow. and have witnessed that everyone has contact with that. Um, if you kind of create the space for that, right? And I think so much of our society is focused on drawing our awareness away from the body, away yeah. from intuition, and also in telling us these stories, as you said, of you're not magical, you're not powerful, you don't yeah. know what's right, you don't have yeah. awareness, you know? And also, as you're saying with art, it's you're not smart enough, you don't have the, the right language, you don't have enough money. And Very I think- the art world it can be very elitist. Yeah? Very elitist, yeah. definitely. And you know, I I definitely know, like for example, my parents like have never really stepped into art galleries, and even uh, people from my background in the United States are not expected to be in art galleries. You know, and a lot of museums don't collect work from yeah. 
a Latinx artist. And that's something that a lot of amazing people are talking about too, is that, yeah, there are a lot of voices that the institutions um, are starting to understand are really important. And I think that's something that um, my wonderful friend, Eliza Swan, uh, when I first started teaching, I was like telling her that I was nervous about going into the institution to teach and also to, to share my work. And, you know, she's someone who years ago was trying to be a teacher and she's an artist and a witch um, mm -hmm. and you know was having a lot of trouble trying to find work as a teacher but now I think people um, are really excited about what she has to offer and yeah. she's been you know in high demand and you know really kind of helped supported me in understanding that what we have to offer is really important and it really is supportive to the institution and it's supportive to other people and um, I think the institution is starting to understand that. And yeah. I think just like many other, you know, even like the art institutions or academic institutions, so many institutions are starting to understand the power of intuition, of the body, and um, of spiritual practices within our practice yeah. and, and beyond it as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have to agree. And also speaking about intuition or also realizing what kind of the possibilities, powers one has, everyone is different, of course. For me personally, um, being in that, the coven I am, it really, it's very damn, we're just three, but we're also, it's like a group therapy in a way. That's also something I really was aware of because I disconnected from many people or the art market a few years back because it made me sick. It really made me sick. I tried to fit in. And I then was for a long time really on my own. Don't be afraid to be on your own. And just sometimes it can be the best thing to just do your thing, write your journal, go for a walk and just be. Don't be afraid of that, I would say also. And just right. let that let that intuition, let that let it grow. And um it it is so powerful once you realize it's there. I mean, I realized it from a quite early age on, thank God. That was without it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I would be dead for sure. Same. Yeah, no, same. <laughs> no, I'm no, absolutely. I'm not so kidding. grateful yeah. to that for that connection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really a superpower. And people are so disconnected from it. And it makes my it makes me sad. It, I find it really disheartening often to see how many people are struggling and they're trying to fit in and keep up and ugh, all this beauty standards and God knows what, and you have to earn money and blah, blah, blah. It's all, it's, it's, it's an illusion. It has nothing to do with reality. I mean, that's the, that's the really the, the absurd part that it's actually, it's just tangible, you know, it has no, it has no impact. Yeah, and, and what you were saying earlier reminds me a lot of the um, Hermit card in the tarot deck, yeah. the, the importance of, of going yeah. within and of being alone and also of really examining uh, the, the stories we've been sold that we've been forced to consume, right? Um, I know I was forced to consume this idea that I had to have a job and I had to have a career and I had to yeah. make a lot of money and that that was the most important thing. And I think it's, it's important to name that, you know, a lot of us don't choose that, right? A lot of us just get forced that idea that that money should be organizing our lives. And yeah. I think that that's also where magic and art are really powerful is that they yeah. bring in another structure. They bring yeah. in another way of organizing reality. And I think yeah. that's also oh, why it's a threat. Yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> totally, very much. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have to agree. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think that's why there are threats and also why, you know, there's so much being invested in invalidating them and making yeah. fun of them and and acting also like they have no place in our dialogue or our conversation. So it's amazing to be centering these things. And I'm really honored for your platform, Esther, and the fact that you're, um, you know, creating work around this and that you also have a book in the works. I think that's so exciting. And it's so important for you to be a wonderful bridge that you're someone who, you know, who's been in music, you've been in art practice, and now you, you know, you're a practicing witch and you have a coven. And so you're able to be a beautiful bridge for all these communities. And I think that's really powerful. You know, I know that as someone also who, you know, traverses realms, I think it's so powerful to be that bridge, you know, to let people know, hey, I exist and you can come over here too, if you want, you know? (laughs) This is also something I think a lot of people, uh, I had sometimes the conversation, I said, but with my mom, actually, after we had our clubhouse thing, you know, but she was like, but what does a witch, but a witch can't be a man. I said, mom, <laughs> a male witch is a wizard, you know, and then we were talking and she was like, but what does a witch do, you know, and she was so... She, she didn't mean bad she, she and that's what I also said I said mom everyone can be a witch it has just to do with I was posting it recently the intention you know the manifesting that it is it is a process but it's it, it's like the Buddhists say you are well, many many uh, um, religions you know if they're not dogmatized or anything you are the Buddha you are the light, you have all the powers you need. It's all inside of you. You just have to, yeah, foster it and just work with it. And I think that's the beautiful part. And that's the same with art, I think. And I had a a friend um, who also worked a long time in the music business and she's like the, she organizes huge events. She's so organized. I love her. And she was reaching out to me today and she said, oh, and she was sending me a, a link from Jenna Gribben, who's an amazing artist in New York. And she's a figurative artist. And she sent me the link and she said, I discovered her through you and I started painting myself. And I mean, that I love that. I don't want to say her name because it's mm-hmm. private, but that she, um, started to and she said of course I'm not as good as her and I said but that's not what it's about and she's so happy because she loves this artist her work and she started painting for herself and that's wonderful and she has it gives her peace and and makes her happy and it's a that's also a magical process if you create if you write it's the same it's also a quote from Pam if women, in this case, it was about women, start creating uh, with with speed and art, or as a writer, they it's it's alchemy, it's magic, and it doesn't matter how good you are from the standards people tell you. It's something you're doing for yourself, and something that changes something inside of you and how you look at the world, or also at art. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, And I think, you know, um, there's also a strategy to keeping people believing that they're not creative or that art is not for them because art is so healing. Art is so powerful at helping us. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, Art has healed my life and has transformed my life. And it's, um, it's a shame yeah, that people get taught that they're not creative or that art is not for them. Um, And I think it is exciting to work with people who believe that they're not artists, quote unquote, and to show them like how, just how good it feels to to make art and also how much it can help you process and um, also transform too. I think there's so much magic to art being spells, to art being portals that you can cast and work with. And so when people limit themselves, they're limiting themselves from all of that um, powerful generative magic that art can have. And 
Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so that's wonderful that you have. And I definitely have had people like that too. And that, you know, we can kind of represent something for people and let them know, like, it's possible to make art. It doesn't matter if you're quote unquote good at it. And in the same way, it's also possible to feel like you're a powerful person too, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that we can also expand um, maybe the definitions people have of what it means to be a witch, what it means to be um, any gender, right, or what it means to yeah. be an artist, like, we are allowed to expand these notions, and to invite people to understand them too, knowing that, you know, we are transforming culture. And I think that's something that's really yeah. exciting is that there is confusion, or there is not knowing. And I think that that's exciting for uh, yeah, for future generations to know that, you know, we are paving a path that has been paved yeah. by many before us and that we are kind of following in that lineage and mm -hmm. creating space, you know, forging yeah. space for ourselves and for others. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, as you say, it's something that started many, 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 many. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's okay. That's what I also had those limiting beliefs where I thought like, Oh, I'm because it's from the Buddhism. Also, of course, it's about you're very aware of the ego, and you don't want to. So I'm always, I always try to be. I don't want the people to think I feel I'm better or blah. And and that was when I did that video where I was like, you know, I was channeling. I was doing. I don't know what kind of ritual I did. I did my new moon intentions or something, and I had something like authentic, I don't know what it was, but my word and my hand kept writing authority. And I was like, eh, what? And because it's a word, I don't use authority. And then I realized I slept over it. And then in the next morning, I knew, yeah, it was also about my spiritual authority, taking myself, I find it still difficult to say it, taking myself serious. Right. as a woman, as a witch and a writer, especially also as a witch. Yeah, because if you practice it, you get more powerful. You, your, your gifts and how you, you, you are augmented, you have more, you sense more, or you can, but people say, oh, that's uncanny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You don't have to explain everything. That's also something I learned. But, and this is something really, amazing to experience these things to trust yourself and what is coming through from spirit or goddess or whatever doesn't right. matter and i think that's very very powerful and if you experience that once you get it right. and then there's no way back there's no way back in a way because you tap all of a sudden into an unlimited source and yeah and you're forever abundant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. and and I think you know what you said about authority is so powerful, especially this year. We are in a hierophant year, and yeah. you know this is about recreating what the norms, what the rules, what the structure of society yeah. is, and also who gets to have the right to have authority, right? That's also yeah. a big part of the Hierophant is, and the Hierophant's my soul card. So it's something, a mm -hmm. card that I know very well. And I definitely mm -hmm. feel like it's informed me and also supported me in stepping into my role as scary as that has been. And also as much as I have resisted it. And so I definitely, yeah. you know, want to reiterate what you said earlier. Uh, we are witches, we are imperfect, we are in process and mm -hmm. we are allowed to show up in our complexities as humans. Um, as people who are going to have really, uh, you know, powerful journeys and are starting yeah. our journeys off within a capitalist patriarchal system and having yeah. to heal from that and also having to bring other people into our spaces. Yeah. And so uh, I'm just thrilled with this conversation, Esther. I'm like so grateful to be connected with you. And I'm like so honored to share you and your work with uh, the communities that I'm connected with so that we can weave our communities together. Okay. Um, and I'd love for you to share just if people wanna get to know you, I will be linking this in the description, but if people mm -hmm. wanna know more about you or your art, how can they get in touch with you? Um, uh, they can get in touch uh, with me on Kaya Art on Instagram. Uh, I answer really every DM 
that comes in. Sometimes it takes a bit more time. And as I have my, my personal Instagram is public now too, since two months. So I'm very happy uh, to um, connect or answer um, any questions. And also, of course, email is no problem. The contact is on the website, the magazine website. Wonderful. And there's also some stuff about me or the, the, the persons who write for Curry Art. And I'm also always open for collaboration because Curry Art is also, that's what we did also last year, is also a platform right. because I also am struggling. I'm tired. I have the fatigue, the corona. We all are in that. We all don't function like we did before the pandemic. Thank God. I'm glad of it in a way. And um, so if it fits, I'm very happy to publish a piece that that fits to curry art. That's what we did. Wonderful. Many artists and curators who reached out from New York and wherever. And, and that's because it's a platform and it's trilingual. So it can be in German, in French, or in English. So um, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if so anyone. If anyone um, out there resonates with what we've been talking about, or you feel like you're someone who also is a witch and you make artwork, definitely reach out to Esther and yeah. and know that there are other people like you and that we're a part of your community too. <laughs> and yeah, uh, what a blessing it is to connect with you, Esther. And again, so grateful to be interviewed by you. And, um, you know, once again, I'm just going to name that I'm linking that interview here in the description. Uh, please share with your communities if you feel like you know someone who is also a witch, maybe even a witch in the closet or an artist in the closet. Yes. Um, let them see this video so that they can, um, you know, hear some of these wonderful words that we've shared here today. Thank you so much, Edgar. It was such a pleasure i'm humming and <laughs> and yes <laughs> thank you so much i really really appreciate it i enjoyed it a lot i'm humming too <laughs> i love that <laughs> okay uh, oh my goodness yeah thank you so much